Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and bring on bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, America wants Bitcoin, and we're going to take a look at what is going on with the Bitcoin mining operation and just how badly they want it. So first of all, we got to take a look at the July Bitcoin mining numbers, as those have changed dramatically since June, as uh, China kicked out all of the Bitcoin miners. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, the hash rate, what's going on right now as far as the current uh, the proof of work and the U.S. infrastructure bill and why the proof of work language was more prevalent than anything else. And then also, uh, we're going to do something uh, pretty important, is uh, talk to the v the vice president of operations over at Poolin, which is the second biggest Bitcoin mining operation in the world. And uh, we're going to sit down with Alejandro de la Torre to talk about how they came about from moving from China over to the great state of Texas and what that all uh, entailed. And then finally, we'll take a, just do some final thoughts. But uh, first, before we get going, I just want to say you may have noticed that my voice is a little bit uh, different today. And that is a very simple reason because I was sick and uh, I still feel a little bit sick. And uh, I want to say thanks, everybody, for the outpouring of support for my uh, well-being and health. Very nice. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, today is just you know, getting over it. So uh, there's only one way to, one thing to do, which is just keep going, just keep moving forward, just like investments. So you can't just sit around and be like, oh, I don't feel bad or I don't feel good. You got to get up and do things. So that's just how it works. So that's what's going on. And uh, right now, <clears throat> let's take a look at what is going on into the market, first of all. So uh, as I was laid up in bed, I saw that we had uh, crossed over the 2 trillion mark. And now uh, it is Sunday, I think it's the 15th of August, somewhere around there. And now we're at 1.96 trillion. So a little bit of a, a pullback, but that's fine because we're not at 1.2 trillion. We're not at 1.3 trillion. We're almost at 2 trillion. We're at 1.96, and that's pretty good. So Bitcoin 46, Ethereum 3100, pretty good. Binance coin slipped in the number three spot, and Cardano, they've been flipping back and forth. Cardano uh, just had their big announcement when the smart contracts are coming forward. So uh, that looks like a pretty good deal, and uh, hopefully it all works out. What's amazing to me about Cardano is that they said, we're going to announce it and they're actually going to hit it. So that will be interesting. So first of all, let's dive in to what is going on with the Bitcoin mining numbers. And this to me was pretty telling because if we take a look at it and uh, we've got, this was from Bitcoin Magazine, since the China Bitcoin ban in June, North American miners have been profiting big. And uh, we can take a look here, Marathon, Argo, Bitfarms, Hut8, and Riot they have a combined of 1,800 and two Bitcoin for the month of July, which is a 58% average increase since June. So again, uh, what's great about that is that, hey, you know, in uh, China, <coughs> excuse me, in China, they told all the Bitcoin miners to get out. I thought this was a, a very bullish thing. I'm ecstatic that it happened. And I'm glad when all the different companies move here to America. I don't even care where you go, honestly. Uh, I'd like you to all come here to America. But if you're going to go to Kazakhstan or, or the EU, fine. That's fine. What are you going to do? Just get out of China. And again, nothing against Chinese people. Just that uh, your government screwed you. And that's really what it comes down to. So uh, that those are the numbers right now. Now let's take a look real quickly at the hash rate. And you can see right here pretty easily. Let me blow this up so you can see what, I'm, what I see. Uh, when we take a look here... And we go over this in June is when there was this big drop off. That's when bit, that's when essentially, you know, uh, in June or things were just kind of sliding down here as as uh, Chinese government cracked down and said no more no more Bitcoin mining. Don't want to do that. We want to have our own digital yuan. Sure, fine, great, thank you. And then of course we we bottomed out here. And then over time, as all those mining operations sold their Bitcoin. And they had to because they had to get stock or get uh, the funds to actually move their enormous businesses outside. Then we started to see a little bit of an uptick. And then here we are today looking pretty darn good for exahashes or terahashes, whichever one you want to uh, look at it here. Anyhow, it's a lot. So that's good. We'd like to see that. I like to see that. I'm glad that it's actually going forward. And then the big thing was, <clears throat> if we're going to talk about why America or does America really want Bitcoin? Well, yeah, we do. We want it badly, apparently, and so bad. And the infrastructure bill, uh, the language of cryptocurrency, 
uh, was all about the proof of work protocol. And it really didn't give too much credence to proof of stake and it didn't give too much as far as like exemptions. Now, uh, uh, Lummis and Toomey, they came together and said, hey, let's, let's put that in. But of course there was one senator from who knows where uh, just shot that down because he wasn't unanimous. So good with that one. But just remember this, <clears throat> in the original language, without doing too much of ourselves, proof of work was in there. And what is proof of work? Well, that is Bitcoin. So with this, and then don't feel discouraged because you got to remember, uh, in America, we have uh, the Senate, uh, we have senators, and, th and then of course they vote on things, then it has to go to the House of Representatives, and that's where it is or is going to be, and they have to all kind of come together, not all, but uh, the majority has to, has to win out, and uh, we'll see if that happens. It's a lot of people that actually push it through. I personally don't think it's going to, but uh, hey, who knows? I'm not a politician. So uh, that is all uh, as far as like uh, where America is going, and I like that. So now what I want to do is it's fascinating to me about what is going on in the background and all these big companies coming in to America and what it actually takes and what was the mindset and mentality and honestly to really take a look at where things are going. So we're going to talk to Alejandro and he is a VP of uh, Poolin and I'm just going to have some uh, quick questions for him. So uh, let's jump right in. Okay. All right, buddy. So yeah, like we talked about, there's a, there's a big influx of Bitcoin miners and of course they had to come over from China because of what happened over there. And that is actually a blessing in disguise for American Bitcoin miners. And to answer some of these questions that I have in my mind, I reached out to Poolin VP, Alejandro de la Torre, and he is here from Poolin to answer some questions. Alejandro, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Nice to, nice to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, man. Uh, good stuff. So real quick, I wanted just to show everybody, just to jog everybody's memory about what's going on. And if you can see right here, let me uh, increase this a little bit. So pooling, you guys are pretty big. I mean, you guys are 12% of the total pool, uh, everything out there. So, and then beforehand, I think you guys were maybe in the 20s, even higher than that. So just, just talk us through real quick about how everything worked out as far as being in China, having this large uh, infrastructure built in for all these, these Bitcoin miners having to uproot because of the communist party and then coming all the way over to my favorite state, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> everything's, everything's bigger and better in Texas. Um, uh, I current, I'm currently right now in Austin. Um, uh, just moved in actually today to a new apartment. Welcome. Thanks. Um, so yeah, so it, it happens all of a sudden, essentially. Um, we had been hearing about, you know, potentially things like maybe slowing down in China with the mining. Perhaps they were going to we thought we thought there was going to be a sort of shift from coal mining in China to more green, green energy mining. That's what that's what kind of we had in mind what was going to occur. But we did not we did not expect a, like basically a total ban uh, of Bitcoin mining in China. Um, right. So Pulin, Pulin is, aside from it being the second largest mining pool in the world, um, which means that miners across the globe connect to us, we also have a very substantial mining farm uh, operations, over 200 megawatts, 250 megawatts of hmm. uh, the newest generation miners. Um, so we, we're very substantial, very large player in this uh, sector. Um, the next day, as soon as we heard the ban, I was, I was based in Germany. I'm moved yeah. down to Texas, but I was based in Germany. Mm -hmm. The next day, I got a call from my CEO Kevin Pan. He's like, um, "Yeah, um, it's it's real. Uh, let's go to the U.S. and find some new location." And literally that night, took the next flight out and got and was in Texas. A uh, couple, you know, eight, unbelievable. Later, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I was a little bit jet lagged. Uh, <laughs> They worried with, with things things were going, but um, yeah. Start, then we started our search around the U.S. We've been to many many states across the United States, so it's not just Texas, mm -hmm. but um, we kind of we kind of d decided on at least building the first phase of, of, of our mining farm operations in Texas and uh, and have a headquarters in Austin for our United States operations, um, uh, which were almost I think we I think we. I think literally last week we we opened up a small office, so yeah. we're we're you know we're moving there. Uh, we're moving uh, moving along. Um, it was uh, right now. There's there's um, the 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 there's a whole list of of 
of things that you need to consider when you open a mining farm operation. Mm -hmm. Of course, number one, most important is the price of the electricity. Um, and Texas, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I know it's it, it's it's pricey out there, and I can understand why you guys went from China, then you then you moved over here. So, talk to us about Texas and the and the prices there. Yeah, sure. So the so so the price for the price of electricity is extremely important factor mm -hmm. in mining, uh, as you can uh, I guess. Texas has very very good prices because um, Texas is, has uh, like oil and gas has a very substantial wind. Uh, farm, a lot very big wind farms. I think I think it's probably I think it's the sixth largest wind uh, electricity producer in the world. Yeah, yeah. So just Texas. So <laughs> and there's a very large solar plants as well. So uh, and wind. So 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 the electric. There's a lot of electricity in in in, in Texas. Um, a lot of energy. So so the price is quite low. Yeah. Um, and additionally, there's the ERCOT, which is the like basically the um, oh yeah. The electrical grid, which is mm -hmm. which is a actually a free market electrical grid, I think it's the only one in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very very interesting for us because um, we're free market. First and foremost, ideologically, we're free market guys. We're Bitcoiners, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 really like free markets. China, um, with the you know with the with the lock with what happened with the bans, um, we we don't want to experience that anymore. So. Aside from it, having cheap electricity, uh, a free market type of electrical grid system. There's also um, Greg Abbott, which is the governor of Texas. Oh, yeah. he's, he's very much um, he understands um, that if there's a surplus of energy is not being used, and you connect to these Bitcoin mining farms, whatever they are, they produce more money. They 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 use that electricity that would otherwise be wasted or unused, um, yeah. and and everyone is making money. There's jobs being created. Um, you know, because for a mining farm operation, for a mining farm building, you need to build the building, which requires people. You need to, you know, there's there's so many, there's like a whole entire array. There's there's hundreds of people that are uh, that that need to that have to work in order for this to to come mm -hmm. to fruition. So it's it's great. It brings in a lot of jobs for the national. Usually, usually these 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 uh, farms are in the middle of nowhere. Usually near, uh, you know, uh, substations. Uh, so the electricity comes directly straight from the substation, um, and there's usually little towns or small towns near uh, these farms, which would, you know, which it helps. It helps. It brings jobs to those towns that maybe otherwise had lost it because of, you know, factories leaving, or whatever. So yeah. there's, that's great. Um, so so the the Texas understands that. So so we're, we're happy about that. We're we're super. We want to, um, you know, continue um, this dialogue between farmers, mining farmers, not just farmers, but mining, uh, mm -hmm. mining farmers, not, and and uh, yeah. the government. We will, you know, we want to continue the dialogue, and we have a lot of things we have in mind um, that we will be doing soon. Um, and but yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so like, I mean, what, what the big uproar last week was uh, the infrastructure bill that came about. And of course, everybody was up in arms because one of the language was mostly proof of work. And then they snuck in some proof of stake and they, you know, as far as who was exempt. So at least for you guys, I mean, on, on the regulatory level, looks like you guys are like, hey, not so bad. So proof of work sounds like it's going to be okay for a while. We'll see what happens as it goes to the house. But the big, the other big question I had was how much, well, uh, there's actually two questions and I always never got a great answer for this one. I don't know if you can help me, which was, you guys have your own structure. You have pooling as this huge, massive infrastructure for all the different miners that, that, that you guys have. But however, miners can connect, disconnect, do whatever they want to from all over the world. So the question I always had to just myself was this, what, what would be the percentage of the actual Bitcoin mining rigs that you, you guys possess as opposed to all the Bitcoin miners throughout the world who are connecting to you? Because I was always curious, like, I wonder if it would be like um, there would be, you guys have like 50% of, of the mining rigs and everybody else out there, they have the other 50% or it's like a 70-30 split or an 80-20. I have no idea. I just want to see if you had any, any kind of like data for that one. Okay. Um, good question. Uh, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know at the top of my head how much hash rate we, we have in our farms. Yeah. But um, you can actually do the math. Whoever's listening can actually more or less figure it out. 
So we have around 250 megawatts worth of equipment. They're all ah, okay. They're all new generation. Yeah. So you can go. You can actually there's calculators, there's, uh, mining calculators. Pooling.com has one, for example. Yeah. In the tool section, um, where you can then you know you can actually put 250 megawatts. You can put new generation. How much? How much electricity each one? Uh, yeah. Each one miner uses. You can, you can come up to a theoretical like to a, a close number of how much hash rate we have, and then you can then take that number. Mm -hmm. uh, take that amount of hash rate, and then um, we ra we have around twelve percent of the Bitcoin network uh, yeah. uh, in our pool. So then you can check how much what what twelve percent is. Mm -hmm. it would be let's say if it's uh, uh, yeah twelve percent of the total hash rate yeah. comes to pooling, and then you can subtract that like how much we have, and then you can come out to that number. Perfect. I don't, I don't think it's fifty. I don't think it's. It's not definitely not fifty. Fifty percent. <laughs> I was just. I was just curious. But yeah, like I mean, it sounds like you guys are doing. I mean, the big things because look, back in back in July when everything was going down, I mean, it really took a big dip. Then yeah. from ever, all the different pools that are out there, I mean, look how much has already come up. So it looks like we're on the road to recovery. I mean, for yeah. as far as like hash rate. So then the next big question I had, which was, I mean, you already talked about it, but <clears throat> what was it like just to pick up everything? And go okay we're going we're having this you know this big infrastructure in china to moving to like uh a texas and setting everything up because when i was talking to <laughs> for the windstone ceo it was chad everett and he was talking to me about he said look there's a ton of people or a ton of chinese miners who are coming in they said they want it today and he goes i've got like you know some infrastructure but it's gonna take me like a year maybe 18 months to get them all going but you guys are up already so what did that look like to to do that to pick up everything and the cost and everything else and then just to move into austin and go okay let's do it and you guys are up and, and uh, moving already that's amazing uh thank you um so just to clarify we're we're still not up and running fully we have okay. we have um we found some hosting arrangements um uh for a percentage of our miners um yeah. but it's not all of it uh we we it, it, what uh, Chad Harris from uh, from from was it Winstone? Winstone, right? Yeah, from Winstone. Um, what he said is correct. Um, in order for especially <laughs> especially something like two like we have two hundred fifty megawatts worth of equipment, which is a very substantial amount. Of yeah. Electricity. Um, this requires a big building, you know, or mobile uh, storage uh, mobile units. They're called. Where you, you can put them and you just place them on somewhere, throw some machines in there. <laughs> um, that, takes, that takes a lot of time to um, to to get up and running. It's not it's not only because uh, it's not only logistically speaking. There's a whole entire there's a whole entire again a whole entire list of things that need to take place in order for this m amount of electricity to be uh, to come up and running and start mining. You need. Uh, for example, um, a lot of transformers for the electricity. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of cabling, or if you're gonna do, <clears throat> if you're gonna do uh, liquid uh, uh, liquid mining, so like not liquid mining, but um, uh, put the mining in, put the miners in liquid. So yeah, um, some merge mining. What I just forgot the name. I don't know. Um, uh, that requires a lot of this liquid. This liquid is actually not that easy to find or to source that much liquid. It's so difficult, takes time. But more importantly, it's like the agreements with the power companies, with the power producers um, setting up. If again, 250 megawatts will require a substation. Um, there's there's only a limited amount of substations across the globe. Yeah. Uh, so you have to build, and sometimes you'd have to build one. Building a substation takes time, um, so so we're we're right now we're right now basically still in the I'd say a, a bit a bit past the beginning because we already we're already settled here we have we have we just opened up the office last week we yeah. have a certain amount of locations that we're like focusing on so you know we're we're getting there but it's gonna take a while it's gonna take a while yeah well even as whoops even as good as that is I mean look at this. I mean, like, like like we just said, the hash rate's going up pretty well. So if you guys are like this, and you guys are the bit one, the second biggest operation, so you have a lot of resources behind you, all the other different pools that are coming over, are probably the same way. So I would expect to see this hash rate go up, difficulty level go up, and so on and so forth. Okay, yeah. Yeah. makes a lot of sense. So Alejandro, that's those are my, my my big questions. I'm just surprised and just um I'm glad that you guys are over here. Let me just let me just tell you this. I'm happy. 
I mean, I know it kind of sucked to, to pick up all the operations, but I'm glad you're in my state. I'm glad you guys picked Austin and I welcome you guys. And I hope uh, more of the Bitcoin miners that are out there uh, will come over to the state because it's, it's, it's great for, for building infrastructure, for producing jobs. It's good for the state. The governor already figures it out, Greg Abbott. So I think it's good. Um, any, that's it for me. I agree, but, uh, I agree, by the way. Yeah, thanks. That's it for me. But any, uh, any words of wisdom for the, uh, for the Bitcoin investor out there before we take off? Um, sure. Uh, Bitcoin remains this, this episode of where, or this, this black swan event, which is basically what it was. Right. Um, people seem to focus, everyone's focusing on the movement and the migration, but the one of the more important things is that, you know, Bitcoin survived this Bitcoin remained totally functional throughout this whole entire debacle. Mm -hmm. Um, so Bitcoin is this was one of this one's a pretty important test for Bitcoin and it came out totally totally fine with fly, it, it, flying um what is it flying colors is it flying that's colors it? that's right I need to get used to start with Americans <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's okay yeah man I mean I gotta agree I mean look we had it actually I mean the in all honesty it was a blessing in disguise I thought it was gonna we we're going to take a lot more time because China was going to have to, you know, relinquish everything and then kind of, and then people would go out their way. But China just did us all a favor, I think. And nothing against the Chinese people is the Chinese government that did that. And let's just all remember that. So guys, that is it. Uh, Alejandro, I want to say thanks again for stopping by. I appreciate it. We'll have you on again as, uh, as time Great. moves forward, you can update us what's going on. Sounds good, Rob. Thank you again for the opportunity. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Yeah, I always forget that myself. Thanks for doing my job for me. All right. So we'll we'll jump back. All right, that's it. So I hope that answered a lot of questions. Uh, I got to tell you, Alejandro, it's it's good to put a face uh, behind these big entities, these big corporations, these big Bitcoin mining companies. So I want to say again, thanks to Alejandro for coming on and just kind of get shedding light about where things are going and how difficult it was and the different setup of operations. And again, we're not at full strength right now. It's going to take a little bit of time, just like we talked about, but uh, I think we're in the right place. So look, uh, that is it for today. And uh, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, first of all, thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by like the video and give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All the things we do on this channel are time sensitive, so that would be fantastic. Anyhow, that's it for today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you on the next one.